ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years, and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. What could possibly go wrong? Office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes, older than this ancient building and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. But she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time, so I had to give her a chance. I don't even know what these papers are. I promised myself I'd write a novel one day. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real, the badge ain't. Chief Blood Boil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, just in case. We used to be star cops a few years ago. Tabloid press, radio interviews, and even a book series. I don't miss those days. Of course, Marty, my old partner, would disagree. He just loved the spotlight. This is, uh, this is one of the most beautiful memories from my old life, before Molly left me and took our daughter. The good things in life don't last long. The best ones always leave first. I saw that in the window of a shoe store. I never understood it, or what it had to do with shoes. M.B. Davis, the eternal king of jazz. The photo is from the days of jazz prohibition. I only heard the old man live one time, but I'll never forget that night. And not only because I woke up at the harbor without my gun, my badge, and my pants. The wild gentlemen. Those guys rebuilt the city after the great fire of 867. 
my heroes when I was a little chick. I'm starting to think they should have left Clawville as it was, burned to the ground. Behind that door lies the kingdom of dirty clothes, cigarette butts, and empty bottles. I don't even know where the key is. Whatever's inside is gonna stay there forever. Books I'm never gonna read. Maybe nobody ever has. I don't see colors anymore. Only emptiness. Everything faded. I need another drink. Who is this dame, anyway? And what the cluck is she doing in my apartment on New Year's Eve? Let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah, Miss Deborah Ibanez. You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M uh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. Huh. Thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on. Spill it. From the beginning. That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Please, that's why I'm here. I must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I could scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. 
You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. You're not very confident. Are you sure you're all right? Yes. Excuse me. I'm just a bit nervous. I've never done anything like this before. Breaking into the apartments of strangers isn't that big a deal. Some people do it as a hobby. Please don't make fun of me, Mr. Featherland. This is hard for me as it is. You're right. Sorry. Did you come alone? All by yourself? I took the subway, then the tram, and then I walked. It wasn't easy to find this place, and to be honest, I had to be discreet. Yeah, well, I think I'm starting to get the picture. This is quite unpleasant for me. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately. Only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. What do you want from me? Me? Oh, don't be silly, Deborah. I mean your employer. I was just talking to myself, out loud. Well, Miss Katsenko thinks you're a great detective, and you're also reliable. That's why I came. Did she also give you the lockpick? Please, could you let this go? I'm really embarrassed. Sorry, sweetheart, I'm just teasing you. As soon as I saw you, you were forgiven. That's... that's very nice of you. It has nothing to do with being nice, Deborah, but you're welcome. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino. I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. If you won't come clean, what's the point of all this? But, Mr. Featherland... I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I'm way too old for this game. Please, just think again. For me and my mistress's sake. Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. 
Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him. Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Why don't you take it to the police? Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. The evidence is very clear. Even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. Or just try the phone. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Well, okay, let's see. Very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall, with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you alright? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Don't play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. You can find her at the Tsar Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club, especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko, but there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? Twenty years experience, ma'am. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny.
Hey, Lewis. Am I bothering you? No, no, no. Of course not, Freddy. Old friend, what's up? Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. The good old rabbit. I can always count on him, even on New Year's Eve. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. <clears throat> you know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work, but still it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same, and the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music the nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner, who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. Back in the day, I used to patrol the city streets in one of these. I don't miss it, but it used to have its advantages. This happened when that old bloodhound, Bloodboil, was promoted to chief of police. The Castilia clan thought this would frighten the old hound, but they were so wrong.
Every time this poster disappears, good old Blood Boil puts it right back immediately. I tore it down at least three times already. Actually, it's a kind of passive-aggressive game for us with the Chief. Did you miss me? No? Same here. Phyllis and Roy's. Two hedgehogs with an arrogance typical of novice cops. They're as prickly as they look. Officious little shitheads, but harmless. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop. Just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so peckish, old bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood boils not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? Here we are again, Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, the place holds the secrets of the ages, and some drunk pigs in the basement. takes is one look and my comb starts to tingle which never means anything good Marty drinks this shit I've never tried it but I'm pretty sure it's gross and probably toxic honor strength unity <laughs> for the love of the wild gods I'm gonna be sick Officer Jardine. They say she's clever, smart, and dangerous. We need more of her kind in here. I'm really not in the mood to meet Deputy Malloy or any of my ex-colleagues from the Predatory Division. One of Blood Boil's favorites, mainly because he's a dog, of course. Monica Rosen. Receptionist in theory, but in reality, she's doing literally everything around here. Like the beating heart of the PD. She's too good for this place, even for this city. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell. But what are you doing here? Are you here for a file? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird.
Mort Mardigan, a notorious deadbeat. Poor guy's been blind since his teenage years. But that doesn't stop him from running into trouble. What the cluck did he do this time? Mort, you scabbiest beast. What the hell did you do? It's Morty to you, sonny boy. Everything's fine. There was just a bit of trouble in the bar, and uh, someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> Did that ever bother you, Morty? Listen, sonny boy. Go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Is that little pimp of a midget still sniffing around you? Uh, Jesse is a good boy, Sonny. And he's good to me, believe me. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course he's using me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster? Still, Sonny, I have no one else. Do you understand that, don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. Are you feeling okay? Well, I'm not what I used to be. But neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, sonny boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. I don't talk to that insane owl. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I care. I'll try to speak for you, but keep it down till then, okay? You don't need this shit, and I don't need it either. Sonny boy, you've always been a good friend. <laughs> More like a clucking pigeon. Detective Chow Hound Bosco. He thinks he's a real alpha, but nah, he's just a lap dog. Holy wild ones, look what the cat dragged in. Hello to you too, Bosco. I see you're busy as always. Eh, I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom, this son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> So, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you? Still dying? I'm still a cop for another 121 days, Bosco. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion, thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not him. It's not that simple, Bosco. But we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. No worries, pal.
This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand, and I was bleeding. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. Long thighs and a big gun. That's Marty's idea of a perfect woman. <laughs> Can't blame him for it. I was just about to go when you came in, so if you want shooting practice, maybe turn on the lights first. You're right. I'm gonna do that. I believe this piece is forbidden. Cops can't use it, but this is Marty's personal collection, so it doesn't matter. At least nobody has ever complained. Her Majesty Big Bertha. Or rather, Big Bertha II, because there was one before her. A sawed-off little broad, but we lost her in a swamp. Marty cried for a week. But once he saw this giant lady here, the balance of the universe was restored. Claudia, tiny, dark, and angry, and hits you where it hurts the most. I know her well. Marty calls her Susie, and I have to say, this little she-devil pulled us out of many tough situations over the years. Marty looks good, big and loud and angry as always. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. What, are you lost? This is the PD building, you know? Cut the shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on, let's forget that. What's past is past. Yeah, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty, you shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, okay? That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. <sighs> yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case. We'll wrap it up in no time. Uh, what kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Ooh, damn, Sonny, stop it right there. I'm in. That's... that's it? Ugh, do you know how boring life is here without your stupid reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so, tell me, what's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? 
Ah, oh, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? <sighs> All right, Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, a nice cup of Zip's coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. Oh yeah, like last time? Those were uh, different times, Marty. With a different Sonny. Uh, well, all right. To the city, then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. <sighs> Sonny, there's a little problem. Not so little, and it smells, too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Uh, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh, yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? Uh, what? <laughs> Just kidding. Sort of. The chief doesn't seem to be in a good mood, but he never is, actually. What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. Chief Bloodboil. Damn. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? Hey, hey, hey. Careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, oh, it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? That's it, boss. To serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. Oh, just a coffee, boss, I swear. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve, and I haven't seen my old partner for so long. How touching. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. We're leaving, sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay, but take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. Yes, ma'am. The hop dog was like the last warning. You can still turn back. My eyes lingered on the sign. An enormous dog like a neon god with limitless power over cheap hot dogs, plastic hamburgers, and watered-down coffee. The cold light called me, but I didn't want to get out of the car. If we went in, we were all gonna be pancakes.
kept together by cold syrup. Marty's worried look shook me out of my reverie. Oh, cluck. Was I talking to myself again? There used to be such life around here before it became an insect ghetto. That was a very long time ago, Marty. I was a little chick, and the hop dog had the best pancakes in the entire city. Well, since Zip became the owner, the cook, and the waitress, I imagine it's all gone downhill. <laughs> True. But at least the coffee's good. That's right. I have no idea what that mongrel's doing with it, and I don't want to know, but its aroma is unbeatable. Peaceful, isn't it? Because mm, the whole town's probably drunk by now. Maybe that's the only way it can bear itself. Doesn't it remind you of someone? Shut up, Marty. <laughs> Got you there, old bird. Did this wreck belong to Zip? Well, it's a wreck just like him, so I guess it could. That's furry. Is this still a thing? The situation's getting even worse, Marty. Have you heard how the young mothers of the Cobbler District are forced to make a living? I have no idea what goes on in the hive, Sonny. I don't think I want to know. But you're still going to tell me, right? Prostitution is the lesser evil. What's worse is that some folks have to sell their kids when they're still larvae. Wait, what? Why? They pay a hefty sum for each of them downtown. They sell them as gourmet food in the most expensive restaurants. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. We made this city, Marty. Clawville didn't do this to itself. Don't ever forget that. Look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the Hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. I'm trying to forget that shit every day. It's been even worse since. I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the Great Fire will happen again, and those Hive houses are pretty flammable. I don't speak of the devil, Marty. But to be honest, I... I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. I do. We just open the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. Hey, pal. Can you hear me? Place is deserted. Poor Zip. You're right. Yeah, the guy's middle name is bad luck. That's for sure. You still don't eat meat, old man? I'm a rooster, a chicken. Why the hell would I eat meat? I don't mean real meat. I'm not a lunatic. But a meat substitute? There's about 10 different kinds. Have you never tried any of them? Why would I? If I don't eat meat, why would I eat a substitute? Because you can. That's the point. Wild gods, Marty. Stop being such a sheep. Do you fall for those adverts? Substitute isn't meat, Sonny. And if it's tasty, why wouldn't I eat it? I don't care what you eat. But don't be surprised when you lose all your feathers or you try to bite off your own leg one day.
And voila, the master himself. What a finch. Uh, Sonny, he's a pigeon, not a finch. Don't make me angry, Marty. Okay, I was only joking. The highlight of my day. Yeah, I can smell it already. How does he make the coffee here so special? Look at that mangy trash panda and tell me, do you really want to know? Um, you're right. As always. The door didn't look like this last time. Yeah, because last time you tore it out and beat that baboon with it. Oh yeah, I remember now. So that's why Zip remodeled the whole place. He had to. We didn't leave much of it standing. If I didn't know how nice we are, I'd almost hate ourselves. Welcome to the club, partner. He sure didn't get any younger. Or prettier. You think he's still mad at us? Frankly, Marty, I don't give a damn. Hello, boys. Now, get the hell out of here while I'm asking nicely. Hey, is that how you greet two old friends? Hey, I'm not joking, Sonny. I got a shotgun under the bar. No, you don't, because if you had, we'd arrest you here and now. If there's still life in you when you're full of buckshot. Ah, it's going well so far. We're just here for a coffee, Zip, okay? Like old times. Nothing's like old times. Haven't you noticed? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's quite noticeable. Shit. All right. And where'd you blow in from? We haven't been anywhere yet, but we're going somewhere. Everybody's going somewhere, right? Tell me, how much do you know, Zip? That depends. How deep is it? Bottom of the well kind. Goes down around Ibn Wessler. Holy hell! Wessler? You've dipped your wings in deep shit, boys. If you've got anything on him, don't keep it to yourself. We'd be... Grateful. Grateful? Maybe you're not gonna trash my joint this time, eh? You know, Ibn's acting strange nowadays. He always believed that if you want something done, you do it yourself. That's how it was for years anyway. And? But now, he left his real estate, the fish racing clubs, the casinos and the bars to his right-hand man, Mongrel Mick. And ever since, he's been kinda weird, bottomed out, brooding in the seediest joints of the city. Nobody ever knew him to be like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Do you think it's about a lady? It's always about a lady. Well, there is a woman. I knew it. But not like you think. Is this gonna cost much? Only a favor, like the good old days. Okay, I'm in. Have you ever been to that place? Of course, a hundred times. Everyone who matters in this city's been there. Sorry, guys. But then, it had a different name and a different owner. Business affairs, right? Yeah, that was the dark era, Sonny. I don't want to talk about it. Roger that. So, Ibn's gone insane. Love will kill you in the end, they say. Seems like everyone's in a poetic mood today. You're one to talk, by the way. Huh? Why? So, about that woman. Is she really that dangerous? <laughs> what woman isn't, huh? No, Zip. I mean, really dangerous. She's got the most influential gangster of the city wrapped around her finger. She calls him her little furbald. How dangerous do you think she is? Hmm. I've got to say, you've revamped the joint pretty well. Yeah, after you trashed it, I had to. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Zip. That ocelot and his gorilla. Baboon, not gorilla. Whatever. Sonny, <clears throat> watch your beak. So you owe me one until about the end of time. But I'd settle for you washing up here for a few years after retirement, Sonny. 
Mind your tongue, furball. <laughs> you didn't get any younger, pal. You're telling me? You look like you haven't had a good night's sleep since forever. To be honest, I've never had a good night's sleep in my life. <laughs> you will when the big sleep comes. And what are your plans? Dying behind the bar? Of course. You got a better idea? A couple, yeah. But somehow this suits you. You know what? Your mother's a goat. You think he might know something about the case? He knows almost everybody in this city. At least he used to once. Let's see if he still does. Natasha's a mysterious woman, a real cursed jewel, if you ask me. She came out of nowhere two or three years ago and landed on the stage of the millions almost immediately. Is that so? Interesting. Yeah, she's got a fantastic voice, makes men go crazy. But we all know that's not what's important. Then suddenly, bam, she got the whole club, just like that. But we know exactly how it was. I can imagine, yeah. Since then, it operates under the name The Czar Club, right? The old click is still clicking, right? Yeah, the club was renamed and remodeled. Everyone knows she was Ibn's lover, but she's not your usual canary. She didn't get involved in Ibn's dirty dealings. Then how exactly does she fit into the picture? Check this. A few months ago, the old rat pulled out of his own businesses and gave control to Mongrel Mick and his mob. Mongrel Mick? Doesn't sound familiar. Mick the Marauder ring a bell? Damn, that little monkey came this far? Uh, I think that little shit took advantage of Ibn not being himself. Which has something to do with this Natasha, right? That's my guess. Thanks for the straight dope, Zip. We owe you one. One? You owe me the price of a new coffee shop, remember? Okay, okay. Whatever you need. Just call us. I clucking will. Thanks, pal. Hey, I'm not your pal, Marty. <laughs>